The atmosphere that surrounds our planet is made up of four key layers, each very different. Although I'm above the clouds, I'm still at the very bottom, in a layer called the troposphere. It's a narrow band, usually more than six miles thick. The troposphere is a rich soup of oxygen-rich air. It's unstable, chaotic and unpredictable, but life depends upon it. And in just a couple of minutes, I'll be leaving it behind. And now I'm 40,000 feet above the Earth. OK, you ready to go supersonic? OK. Okay, here we go. We're about to go supersonic. We are approaching 45,000 feet and we're about to cross an invisible boundary in the atmosphere. We're leaving behind the first layer, the troposphere and entering the stratosphere. A very different place. Here, the air is stable and exceptionally dry, so there's virtually no weather. The stratosphere is home to the ozone layer, which reduces the amount of lethal solar radiation reaching the Earth. We've reached 50,000 feet. Nearly 80% of the mass of gases that make up the atmosphere are below me. Absolutely nothing above me. Black sky. Black sky, well, dark blue. Yep. This is the highest I've ever been. But almost 50 years ago, one man went much, much higher than me, and he experienced the atmosphere in a completely different way. On August 16th, 1960, long before man had set foot on the moon, military pilot Joe Kittinger took a solo journey to explore the heavens. Not in a rocket, but in a giant helium balloon to determine the risks of high altitude bailouts from air or spacecraft. The balloon took Kittinger over 19 miles into the stratosphere. That's twice the height that I reached. Then Kittinger did something astonishing. He jumped. This is the actual moment. He fell to Earth, reaching a speed of almost 620 miles an hour and yet he had no sense of speed. I had no ripple of the, of the fabric, uh, my pressure suit, and I, I, it was a very weird sensation. I had no, uh, no visual reference on anything, so I, I thought I was really suspended in space. Kittinger had fallen at great speed as he plunged towards a troposphere, thick with clouds, floating over a New Mexico desert. Finally, he opened his parachute. His jump remains the longest free fall in history. Just 15 minutes after he jumped, 
Kittinger was back on the ground. Falling from the upper reaches of the stratosphere, Kittinger had plummeted through 99% of the atmosphere's mass. 15 minutes before, I'd been at the edge of space, and now, to me, I was in the Garden of Eden. We, we really don't appreciate what a beautiful planet we have. Although Kittinger had jumped from high in the stratosphere, he still didn't reach the furthest edge of our atmosphere. Above the stratosphere are more protective layers, so wispy and tenuous that they barely exist but are vital for our planet. About 30 miles beyond the stratosphere lies the third layer, the mesosphere. It's this layer that helps protect us from meteors. When we see a shooting star, it's actually a meteor burning up high in the atmosphere. The mesosphere is also home to a strange phenomenon called noctilucent clouds. They're thin, wispy clouds that can only be seen in the summer at high latitudes. Beginning at nearly 50 miles high, there's the fourth layer, the thermosphere. Here, the atmosphere is so thin that beyond 50 miles, we approach the beginnings of space. The space shuttle orbits the Earth in the thermosphere. It's also where nitrogen and oxygen interact with the sun's lethal solar wind, creating the aurora around the Earth's poles. <laughs> 